Brothers and sisters, welcome. It is wonderful that we can meet again and meet today, the 12th day of the 12th month in the year 2021. Oh, all praise to be to God. And we are in our month of praise and thanksgiving to God. I've said we'll do basically three things. So just to set the context, this period, we will continually praise and thank God, and we will review our plans for the year 2021, as well as set our plans, desires, expectations for the year 2022. And then finally, we will take all that to God in prayer. So it will be our season of prayer as well. Glory be to God. Let's open to our text, Psalm 34, verse 1, as we go into praise and thanks to the Lord. Let us read it together. Psalm 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Our add verses 2 and 3. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Oh, your soul makes boast in what? Is it in yourself? Is it in any human being? Oh, what has kept you alive to see today? What has kept me alive to see today? What has kept us alive to this day? My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. We want to magnify the Lord. We want to praise his name. So I'll lead corporately, and then we'll give people a chance to say one or two things to just praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so let's open our mouths to and just thank God. Tell him, Heavenly Father, I thank you. We want to thank God for the year 2021. To you be all praise, all blessing, all glory, all honor, and to your son Jesus Christ, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to take an exhortation. In line with all this that we have said, a short exhortation, and then we will go into prayer. I have shared um, text messages with us, and I want to believe that you have come with your own plans. You have come with your reviews. And part of why when we say, what do you praise God for? Thank God for people's struggle is because many people have also not done their reviews. They have not taken time to reflect, to say, how has this year been? What are those things? Worthy of praise and thanks to the Lord. So we want to take a short exhortation that I titled Finishing Strong. Finishing Strong and Finishing Well. Finishing Strong and Finishing Well. Praise the name of the Lord. They are one and the same thing. Finishing Well, Finishing Strong. But it is important to finish well and finish strong. That's why I said Finishing Strong finishing well. Glory be to God. We want to take our text from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. Please, I want somebody to read that scripture for me. Finishing strong and finishing well. It is actually the one who finishes strong that finishes well. Someone may finish, but may finish weakly, and such a person will not finish well. So finishing strong and finishing well. Please go ahead and read. Second Timothy chapter 4, and in verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. 
I have kept the faith. New King James Version uses the word the race. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finished my course. It is important to take note of that word. My course. It said my course. That's why I like the way New King, I mean King James Version puts it. He personalized it. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. So he knew, number one there, that there was a course for him to take. There was a course for him to complete. And then he said, I have kept the faith. If you read verses 8 down, or just verse 8, it continues. He said, finally, after saying, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. He said, finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. This is Paul speaking. So Paul recognized that life was like a race. Life was like a journey. Life was like a contest, or rather, let's put it in the present, applying it to us, that life is a race, is a journey, is a continuous contest. And it is only those who cross the finishing line that will be rewarded. So there is always a reward time. While there is a final finishing line where we will end up and close our, our eyes in death, if Jesus tarries in this world, or at the second coming, if we are still alive, why, when he comes? Why there is that final crossing, finishing line? There are many finishing lines on our way. As we go through this journey, go through this race. One of the finishing lines is a year that ends, the end of the year. One of these milestone lines that we have to cross is the end of the year. Many, when they come to the end of the year like this, don't realize that it is a finishing line they are crossing. And so they carry on in life the way they have always done, not taking stock of what they have gone through in the year they neither have any plan, so they cannot review their plans. They neither have any expect, uh, uh, expectation, but such people live in their wishes. I say they live in what? Their wishes. So for them, life is a wish. Their desires sit at the level of wishes. So year in, year out, they go through the same things, but they make no difference. They continue in their lives and keep wishing that things will change, things will be better. Thomas Edison said 5% of people think, only 5% of people in the world think, and another 10% think that they think, you know? So they think that they think. And they live by the assumption that they think that they think. So at least they try to even uh, bother to think that they think. And then the other 85% will rather die than think. I think that is also applicable when I look at Christian life. That 5% of Christians do what the word says. As simple as the Bible keeps emphasizing James chapter 1 from verse 22. We've talked about it. We've read it many times. That it is only the doers of the word, not the hearers only, are blessed. James chapter 1 verse 22. 
But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. 23. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man, observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. This is the word of God. Despite this admonition, Jesus also said, those who hear his word and do them, they are like those who build their foundation on a solid rock. And on the other hand, those who hear the word and don't do them, and like those who build on the sand. Yet, I can say by my observation, similar to what Thomas Edison said, that 5% of Christians, all those who say they are Christians, do what the word says. Another 10% try to improve their lives by the word, by what the word says, what the promises of God in the Bible. And the other 85% rather die than change their ways. Yet, they want things to happen. No wonder there are so many magicians and merchandise taking over the pulpit, selling anointing oil, and giving uh, 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 miracles by just promising them to give money. Just give money and you will get miracles. Because 85% could even be more are not ready to do the word of God. So finishing strong and finishing well. By our text this morning, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, Paul said, I have fought a good fight. Fighting requires action. I have finished my course. To finish a course means you have to know the course. It requires plan and strategy. I have kept the faith. To keep the faith means to run according to the rule and guideline. The same Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If we start reading from verse 22, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If I let's read from verse 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race, that same race, those who run in a race or run when one receives the prize, run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. 26 and 27. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, not like anybody who is wishing, wishing to pass the exam, and yet you will read on your bed. You, you have not sat down to prepare, to write, practice, recall, research, do all that is required to do to meet the requirement of passing the exam. Yet you wish you would pass the exam. Not like one who is uncertain. One that is setting out to do business. And all is give me money. Once I have money, I will do business. You have not sat down to make a plan. Do the market research. Supervise. All that is required to be done to make that business successful. You want to cut corners and think you'll be successful. So Paul said, I run, not with uncertainty. I fight, not as one who beats the air, not beating empty. 27, say, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. So there is a rule, there is a guideline, there is a principle. Brothers and sisters, as we said that three things, we want to do praise and thanksgiving throughout this month. I want to do a review of the things that the Lord has taught us this year. And we want to take that into 
making a plan for ourselves for the year 2022. So let's just remind ourselves at least five key topics that we have gone through this year. Number one, growing in the spirit, growing in the spirit. We may not have time now, but I want you to think about this. What did you take out of that teaching, growing in the spirit? Number two, abiding in Christ. What did you take out of it? Number three, the redeemed of the Lord. What did you take out of it? Number four, amazing possibilities in God. Number five, mountains of victories. Our plan for 2021. Mountains of victories. Our plan for 2021. The victory plan for 2021. That is what we will translate into our river of abundant life plan for 2022. Rivers of abundant life plan for 2022. Glory be to God, because our 2022 uh, theme is abundant life. And so we'll be looking at rivers of abundant life our plan for 2022. May Lord brothers and sisters be doers, and so be ready to take action. Because anybody who doesn't take action will face what I call the greatest disappointment. The greatest disappointment. The greatest disappointment is when your expectation fails at the last minute. And this is what happens to people who merely wish and don't want to take action. People who desire and yet they don't want to do what is required. People who refuse to think, just like Thomas Edison said, and in our own context, people who refuse to do what the word says, their expectation shall be disappointed. But the Bible says the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. Yet there are many who are righteous and yet they themselves are the one who plots the cutoff of their expectation. The Bible in Proverbs chapter 13 verse 12 says, hope deferred, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desires comes, it is a tree of joy, a tree of life. Isn't this what happens to many people? Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 14 verse 28, that anyone who wants to go to war will sit down, or anybody who wants to build a tower will sit down and count the cost. Beloved brothers and sisters, let us not allow the greatest disappointment be our end. The greatest disappointment, as I've said, is when one is crossing the finishing line. Instead of lifting the two hands and say victory, the person is going through that line saying, had I known, oh, I would have done this, oh, I would have done that. I want to challenge you that if you do not learn to put to practice, if I don't learn to put to practice the word of God, we cannot escape the greatest disappointment syndrome. That person whom at the time of crossing the finishing line, instead of Shouting joy, joy, is living a life of regret. Football is a game I love, and it is one game that teaches so much about this. Near the crossing of the finishing line, which is the end of a match, that is where usually a team loses or gains victory. Teams that drop their guards and refuse or uh, to con uh, refuse to continue to put in their best effort often lose the match at that last hour and on the contrary those who continue to do what they have been doing keep strong in fact improve intensify their efforts not even what they have been doing do much more they take the corrections, the amendments, the lessons that they have gathered in the past 
60, 70, 80 minutes. That last 10 minutes before the whistle is blown on the 90th minute, the team that does that often come out with victory. I want to close with this last point, brothers and sisters. We have covered a lot of grounds and it is time for us to do. So you have to pursue something for the remaining days of this year, 2021, to prepare yourself for success in these last days of 2021 and also in the year 2022. So I want to adjure you, my brothers and sisters, and admonish you to make plans for 2022 and pursue, what should you pursue? Number one, the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Pursue the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 says that he is pursuing this to know Jesus Christ. He said that I may know him, that I may know him. Number two, pursue the glory that excels, the glory that excels, the power of God that has been made available to you and I to utilize in this life and succeed. Second Corinthians chapter three, verses nine and 10, write them down. Number three, pursue soul winning, souls for the kingdom of God. Second Timothy chapter four, verse two, Paul said to Timothy, preach the word in season and out of season, whether it is convenient or not convenient. Number four, pursue your dreams. Make your success career plan, your academic success plan, your finance success plan. Make your plans. Hello, brothers and sisters. If you put this together and carry through this period and into 2022, I believe, God, you will be successful. Your almighty God bless us all and grant us success in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So there have been many exercises we have been given to do during the year. So let me put this now again clearly in the form of exercise. So number one, write it down what you're going to do. I admonish you and I judge you make plans for 2022. Number one, review the Bible teachings and words of faith that the Lord has given to us through 2021. Number two, make plans for 2022. Correct your mistakes and set improvement targets. Correct your mistakes of year 2021. He that sin, sin no more. He that was lazy, be lazy no more. He that did nothing, do, don't lay, sit down doing nothing no more. Get yourself to walk. Number three, set time and days to pray and fast and study the Bible. Number four, take actions. With this, you will finish strong and not suffer the greatest disappointment. When you cross the milestone, the, the, the milestone uh, finishing line of the year 2021, when you cross, the milestone of the finishing line of 2022 and for the rest of the life. We will not be disappointed in the name of Jesus. Let us pray then as we prepare. So what are your goals? Or what were your goals? What is remaining? Let's open our mind and say, Heavenly Father, we thank you for helping us to achieve great goals this year, 2021. We thank you for our mountains of victories that you have helped us to achieve. To you, our God, we all glory in the name of Jesus. And I'll tell him, say, Heavenly Father, I present to you the remaining goals that have not been achieved in this year. Heavenly Father, I pray that you help me in the areas that I have been weak. Help me, strengthen me. Help me, Father God, to understand how to make 
a strategic plan. Help me, Lord, to be able to follow up with the plans, the actions that you need me to take. Help me. Father, help me. Go ahead and spend time on that prayer. For some of you, you really need to repent. There are people that throughout the year have written down nothing, nothing. Upon all we have said, they have not done any of the exercises. And yet you want to see things happen in your life. Okay, this is not how it works, brothers and sisters. I don't just give you the exercise for myself, and I'm not pushing you for myself. It's for you. They look simple. They look like anything. But that's how it works. If you cannot obey these simple things. Sit down and try to make effort to put down things and walk them. So you really need to repent. Repent, Paul said, he did not fight as an uncertainty. He did not fight like one that beats the air. He knew exactly what he was pursuing. And when he finished it, he said, I have finished my course. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. While finishing, while running this race, I have kept the faith. I didn't run it and run into error. I didn't run it and didn't follow the guideline. I did it as the Lord expected me to do. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. If you don't plan, there is a popular saying that says, if we don't plan, we are planning to fail. If, and another popular saying that says, if you keep doing the same thing, you will keep getting the same result. I challenge you, brothers and sisters, to change your ways. This is why Christians are not getting results, and they claim they are Christian. They talk with their mouth but they are never ready to improve themselves, never ready to change their ways. The Bible says, Paul described them and say, ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. So truth in the areas of you achieving success in your own life is there that other people who are not even Christians, have come to discover many ways of achieving success in life. But many Christians who have received the grace of God enjoy talking, enjoy just wishing that things will happen. Watch and pray is the song we sang today. Watch. Watch means to act, to take the action. It means to do something about it. Christian, seek not yet repose. Don't relax, go sleep. Don't lie down and wish things will just happen. Are you praying? Are you praying for grace or strength now? I've allowed us a lot of time in that space because that's your own personal work. You know yourself, you know where you failed in the year 2021, you failed yourself, not God. God never fails. As we always sing, he never disappoint me one day. He never disappoint me one day. Since I joined the army of the Lord, he never disappoint me one day. But look at your life. Have you not made that song? When you sing that song, have you not made yourself a liar? Because God can never lie. If there is one thing God cannot do, is for God to lie. For God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If he has said it, he will do it. If he has promised, he will bring it to pass. It is impossible for God to lie. So the song is true, but many of us are liars because when we sing that song, we are not singing the truth because we have failed to do our own part. And so we have been disappointed many times this year, not because God disappointed us, 
Not because God failed, but because we failed to do what God has asked us to do. We failed to do the exercises and the assignments that the Almighty God has given us by His Spirit. We failed to develop and improve ourselves. Yet, we wish things will happen differently. Beloved brothers and sisters, again, if we fail to plan, we plan to fail. It is a well-known saying, and not just a saying, it's a well-established fact. As I've challenged us during the year, grace of God is available. But what you do with grace determines what you get in life. Are you ready for the grace of God? to manifest in your life. Are you ready to make a change? Let's go ahead and repent for the disappointments of this year, 2021. Oh, are you just learning it? You are the one to, to repent. I am the one to repent for the disappointments because we are failing God when we suffer disappointments. We are failing God. I know we find it easy to cry unto God, Lord, help me. Help me in this failure. Yes, cry to God. But more importantly, repent and tell God, I repent that I failed you. When you fail, you are the one who failed God. Learn this today. When I fail, I am the one who failed God. That's why he brought us that word of amazing possibilities. With God, all things are possible. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that is impossible with God. Why did I fail? I failed God. Why did you fail? You failed God. If you did what God said do, you would succeed. If I did what God said I should do, I will succeed. If we all do what God says we should do, we will succeed. Finally, bring your plans before God now, having repented of our failings, of our disappointments. Let's bring our plans before God. I know for some people, this doesn't sit well with you at all. But beloved brothers and sisters, whether it sits well with you or not, this is the truth. You better get up and change your ways if you want to move forward. So that's why some Christians will continue to move forward and have and make impacts. And many will continue to sit down and go around the circles till that final finishing line, crossing line. As we have said today, finishing strong and finishing well. Those who finish strong are those who finish well. Those who finish weak will not finish strong. Though we are all Christians, make up your mind that you will finish strong. For by finishing strong, is how you finish well. Just like that football team I told you, they will continue to play, put in all their best, do everything, learn in the process. And in the last 10 minutes, instead of relaxing, they will pound on their opponent. Everything they can do, they will throw it in. And usually they come out victorious. And the other ones who say, oh, just 10 minutes to go, ah, it will soon be over. Let us relax. Usually they suffer defeat and they suffer what I call the greatest disappointment. That is disappointment at the crossing of the line when you are supposed to be celebrating, having victory, you fail. It will not be your portion. It will not be my portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Together now, Heavenly Father, we present our plans to you. And I hope you have a plan. We present our reviews to you, Lord. We use our sister, Sister Gertrude, as a point of contact who has spoken out of the things she had desired of you. And Lord, I know many of us desire the same thing. Even as I've also challenged your children that this year, the remaining days of this year and going into 2022, that we should pursue the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the knowledge of God and his son, Jesus Christ. We should pursue the glory that excels the power of God. 
We should pursue the winning of souls. We should pursue those excellent dreams and desire success in life, in our careers, in our academics, in our finances. We should pursue being a praise unto God. We should pursue making impacts in the life of others, helping the needy, the poor, not being those who are looking for people to give to us, but to be blessings to others because we have discovered the key to success and we have succeeded by the grace of God. Heavenly Father, we pray, O oh God Almighty, that whatever are our shortcomings in the year 2021, Father, forgive us. We repent of all our shortcomings. We repent in the areas we have failed. We repent, Lord God Almighty, for the instructions we didn't carry out. For the disobedience, Lord, we repent of them all. For our sins, we repent of them all. And we ask, Lord God Almighty, help us now. Supply strength, Lord, where we have been weak. In the mighty name of Jesus. And now, Lord God Almighty, we ask for the remaining days of the year 2021. Father, restore to us whatever we have lost in the year 2021. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, whatever we have set to pursue that we have not yet achieved, Lord, help us to achieve in this year 2021. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, all the blessings that you have in store for us in this year 2021 that we have not yet enjoyed. Father, roll it all up and give to us for the remaining days of this December 2021. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we pray that your mighty hand will shield us. You will protect us. Keep and defend us. According to your word in Psalm 91 verse 10. There shall no evil befall us. Nor shall any plague come nigh our dwelling. Shield us, keep us, cover us, O God, from all evil. That, Lord, we will see the end of the year 2021. And we will cross into the year 2022. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we agree, therefore, that the failures of 2021 will not follow us into 2022. Lord, we agree, therefore, that the year 2022 is, will indeed be our year of abundant life. That in that year 2022, Father, you will help us that we will fulfill all that you will help us to put together, as we call it, our rivers of abundant life plan. You will cause your abundant life, your river of life, your strength to flow through us. Even so, Lord, we pray, therefore, for wisdom that as we begin to put our plans, our desires, according to your will, guide us by your spirit, O oh God, that for the remaining days of the year 2021, you will make clear and known to us your plans for our lives for the year 2022. That year, 2022, we will greatly excel. Your glory will excel in our lives. And we will enjoy your abundant life. Just as you have promised, Lord Jesus, the faithful witness of God, our great and good shepherd. And so we say all thanks, all blessing, all power, all glory be to you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.
Amen. The Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters. And uh, please take what you have heard. Sit down on your own. Review what we have studied. The Spirit of God will help you once you give heed to these things and guide you. So your life will, in, will change for the better. God Almighty bless you. I want to dismiss here. Count your blessing and praise God. And then take corrections where you failed. Take responsibility. It's never God who failed you. You failed yourself. It was not anybody else. You. Unless you come to that point of 100% responsibility for your life, you keep going around. Okay, so we'll leave it here. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Bye-bye, brothers and sisters. God bless you.